you know who Andrew Yang is, right? Uh, he recently announced that he was <clears throat> no longer associated with the Democratic Party. Uh, a decision that I think is well suited for him. And he's an independent now, politically. But in his statement, he said that he doesn't recommend that people uh, become politically independent, especially in areas where, you know, 85 plus percent of people are either Democrats or Republicans, because it's very disenfranchising. And I thought that was an interesting thing, because, you know, if he runs as an independent, but he's telling people to stick with the left and right, uh, <clears throat> it doesn't seem like it's in his best interest, although I understand the logic of, uh, I understand the logic, though, of him saying that choosing to be independent in a polarized world is very disenfranchising. And when I look back on my life and everything that I've tried to do, I can see that my tendency to stand on the outside and to make a stand on the outside or in the underground and the undercrust of what the mainstream of what the masses really pay attention to or prioritize, calling out the normalcies that are quite egregious, but that we're conditioned to accept as everyday life, and we're conditioned to think that these are these things are just the way of the world when it comes to the way our economy is, the way that our laws are, the way that society is. And there are a lot of good things. <clears throat> there are a lot of good things about our economy and our laws and the ways of our world. And there are a lot of like fatally flawed things. And the fatally flawed things are kind of obvious to, to anyone if they, if they pay attention to it. But the problem with paying attention to it is we still don't really know what to do about it. So people tend to just dismiss or deny or ignore. And... I've lived a life where it's really hard for me to accept these things, and I've spent my life imagining how these things could be changed, and, you know, there was a time in my life when that felt like a very worthy cause, back when I was more youthful and optimistic and less trampled down by life, when I thought it was worth it, I thought that... You know, I was certain that it would result in change and good things, starting discussions, starting world-changing conversations or just participating in world-changing conversations that have already started, but, you know, the truth is, it's been a fucking lonely life. And I'm getting to the age where, <laughs> I don't know, I'm tired fucking tired and uh <laughs> but it's yeah, I can't undo my thought processes I can't it, there's there's no way I would ever be able to be like okay yeah I'm a democrat or yeah I'm a republican it's impossible I have gone too far down the damn rabbit hole and that used to seem like a really virtuous thing Maybe I'll find a way for these things to make sense to me again. But right now, I just want to have a functional life. I just want some peace of mind. So what am I supposed to do? <laughs> just do the best I can within the system as it exists. Be restored. I'm also going through a lot of family difficulties taking care of my grandma for these past two years and she's starting in-home hospice care so it's a very emotional time for my family and I've been sorting out what to do for myself in this moment without being too concerned with the future for myself and my family just a very confusing time 
and <laughs> content creation on social media hasn't been a priority for me. Um, but there are a lot of people on these platforms that I care about and I haven't really been showing that lately. So I just wanted to say hi and uh, And I hope you're hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. It's not always a graceful kind of hanging in there, but I'm hanging in there.